Okay, in this video I am going to introduce Adobe Illustrator and show you how to do some simple uh, kind of pen diagramming, pen tool diagramming on top of an image. So first thing I want to do, I have Adobe Illustrator open here and I'll go to new file. You can also get there by going file new. So I'll click new file. Uh, up at the top here I've got like a couple different options. I have web which is going to give me document sizes in pixels, or I can go to print, which will give me document sizes in inches, especially if I change my units over on the right to inches. And I can uh, manually adjust what the width and height of my images are, uh, my, image, my document is, by changing those values, or there should be some presets. Let's see, view all presets. Tabloid. So tabloid is, like letter is 8.5 by 11, that's your standard kind of printer size, and then tabloid is 11 by 17. So that should automatically, and you can see here under orientation, it's it's uh, it's portrait right now, and I want it to be landscape, so that makes it uh, 11 tall by 17 wide. All right, everything else looks good. I'm going to go ahead and click create. Oh, there we go. Okay. Cool. So, uh, Let's see, yes, your settings and menus may not look exactly like mine. Up at the top right of your screen, if you click this little button, like a rectangle within a rectangle, so there's different, uh, yeah, there's different sort of presets. I like Essentials Classic because it is the classic settings, um, like how Illustrator used to be. Um, and yeah, you should see most of what I'm seeing on my screen, especially this stuff over here on the left and at the top. Uh, but if not, I'll, I'll explain as I go how to get it there. Uh, most all your menus can be found through under the window uh, drop down at the top. So anything that you're not seeing over here that's like a panel over on the right uh, is, is going to be under window somewhere. Now I'm going to go to my file here. And I've got a couple images uh, that I've adjusted and edited. So there's my uh, .png file. I'm going to go ahead and drag that in. So if you watched the Photoshop video, you'll know that uh, I saved this as a PNG with the background cropped out. Excuse me. This is a useful, excuse me. This is a useful uh, file type because if I say make a, if I start to put other images or, or text or graphic elements on my page, uh, it allows me to kind of see through the parts of the background that I've cropped out uh, to those other elements on my page. And that's true in, in, in any software you drop this into, uh, in any Adobe software. So right now you can see because I dropped the image in first and I made the rectangle, it's behind. If I right click, if I select it, right click, Go to Arrange, Bring to Front, and now you can see it's in front of it. And so anything in that background that I cropped out in Photoshop is, is going to be, gonna be uh, uh, visible. Um, so I'll click and I'll just delete that for right now. So uh, navigation, if you hold Alt and scroll with your mouse wheel in, um, in I'm going to minimize that so I get a little more space here. So Alt and scroll allows me to zoom in and out. We also got the zoom tool over here, just like in Photoshop. And then uh, spacebar, left click and drag is my pan tool. Uh, I have a uh, control R on the keyboard, or I think if you go to view, man, is it guides? Uh, control R brings up the ruler. Uh, which I'm not sure what where that is in the menu to be honest with you, but Control R on the keyboard you can see up at the top that's bringing up my ruler. So, and then we can also tell we got an 11 by 17 here. All right, now there's a um, uh, so Adobe Illustrator is different from Photoshop because it's mostly used to um, create what's called vector artwork. Vector artwork means uh, rather than using pixels like you do in Photoshop, it uses like lines, paths, um, outlines, uh, and so on. So mostly what you do in Photoshop is is you draw lines, 
uh, curves or shapes, uh, rectangles, circles, ellipses, all that kind of stuff. Just like in Photoshop, if you click and hold on any of these buttons, you'll see a couple of different options in there. Um, yeah, so oops, I'm not going to use any of those tools at the moment. What I am going to use is what's called the pen tool. So the pen tool enables me to, um, let's see here, oops, sorry. Okay, sorry, I'm out of control, control Z. The pen tool enables me to draw curvy lines like what you see in that little animation when I hover over the button. So I've got the pen tool equipped, you can see it there in, with my cursor. So if I click just anywhere on the screen and start clicking, a couple things happen. Uh, I'm going to hit escape now because I want to stop drawing this curve uh, and I'll go back to my my black cursor which is different from my white cursor. I'll explain that in a minute as well. So what I have here is, is what's called a path in uh, Adobe Illustrator and uh, actually if you hit control Y on the keyboard you can preview just the paths without any of the graphics applied. So you can see it's just a series of points with lines connecting it. Now, all paths can have what's called a fill and a stroke applied to them. Over here on the left, we have two swatches. The outline one is the um, fill, I'm sorry, the stroke swatch. And so I can change the color of that stroke uh, by changing the color over here on the color panel with that, um, with the uh, fill swatch on top. So I'm going to click, like click it and make sure it's on top. And then if I click within my color uh, my color wheel thing down here, I can change that color. And if I deselect, you kind of probably can't see it too well, but yeah. So you can see it's changing the color of the kind of path of the curve. And if I select that one more time, and I'm going to go now to the fill. So even with a with an open outline or an open path, it'll like create it'll create like a stretched fill between the endpoints. And that's what you're seeing here with the red. So again, if I change the color of that, it'll change that fill color. Um, the other thing I can adjust, so what I should say is um, if I wanted to not have a fill, if I just wanted the outline of the line to be shown, I can go to my fill swatch and click the button, the white outline with the red line through it, and that will make there be no fill to my, to my shape. So now I can, again, I'll click the outline to put it on top. I'll make it black again. The other thing I can adjust with the, with the stroke is the weight of the stroke. So if I go to my stroke panel, once again, if you don't see a stroke panel in your window, go to stroke. Um, I should mention too that sometimes these things will have like more or less options. If you double click on the little tab where it says uh, what that tool is, You'll, you'll see more or less options appear. So if you don't have the options that you want, try double clicking. So if I change the weight of it here, oops, I'm sorry, I don't have it selected. So I'll select my line again. And I can bump up my weight and I can bump down my weight, right? I can also do things like create a, a dash line. Uh, I can make, you know, different patterns here and so on and so forth. I don't want a dash line though, so I'll uncheck that again. Um, yeah, so that's the stroke settings. Um, so any line or path uh, should have those options. And uh, last thing I should mention. Uh, oh, well, the other thing I can mention is up at the top, you'll see there's a there's a, uh, uh, a box where it says opacity. If I click on the arrow there, I can slide, right? So if I change it to like, you know, 50%-ish, so now if I place it over my image, you can see that it's sort of semi-transparent. I can see part of my basket through that line, right? Uh, and we'll use that later in a little bit. Okay, last thing I should mention is the direct selection tool. So right now I've been, and so far I've been using what's just called the selection tool, which allows me to select objects. Uh, I can resize my photo, for instance, if I grab the handles and move them around. Importantly, if you hold shift, on the keyboard when you do that. Uh, it will um, oops. it will um, constrain the proportion so I don't end up stretching my image. There we go. And then if I just click somewhere and drag it, I can re reposition. So the same is true for my um, for my path that I drew over here, right? I can resize it. 
I can drag it and move it around. Um, but what if I wanted to edit the points of the path itself? That's what the direct selection tool is for. So if I switch over to the direct select tool, I'll click on my path, and you'll see what's appeared. So I could drag a whole segment at this point, but also what are called anchor points, which are the like vertices between where the line is drawn. Uh, if I clicked directly on one of those, for instance, and drag it around, I can move like the vertex. And if I hold shift and click on multiples, I can drag multiples. Same is true for segments, right? So if I click on one segment, shift, click on another. I think I should, yeah, I can drag multiple segments and they don't have to be adjacent either. Okay, so that's what the direct selection tool does. And I'm just gonna go ahead and delete this line. Now what I actually wanna do is, uh, is create a, um, <clears throat> what I wanna do is trace over my image of my basket and create a, uh, a series of lines that kind of diagram the stitching pattern of my basket. And I'm gonna use the pen tool to do this. So over here at the, I'm gonna go back to my pen tool. Now like what I did before, I can click and just make straight line segments. I'm going to go Control-Z, back it up all the way. Or if I click and without letting go, drag my mouse, you'll see little handles appear. And those create what are called Bezier splines. Just a fancy way of saying it's a curve, right? So each time I click and drag, I'm defining how the curve gets interpolated between anchor points. Um, and again, if I hit Escape, I can get out of that. And just like before, when I was adjusting my straight line, I can use the direct selection tool to grab individual anchors or their handles, right? Which are the things that are defining the curve between, uh, between uh, vertices. Okay, so that's exactly what I'm going to do in order to trace out uh, my basket here. Pen tool selected. Um, now it's be good to just kind of select part of the basket. I'm sorry, trace out the stitch on part of the basket. Uh, now what I want to do is maybe um, I'm going to click and drag there, click and drag there. Now I can do it this a couple ways. It'd be cool to show like the um, the part of the stitch that's going underneath. Uh, in other words, the part that we can't see uh, in the photograph, right? So there's two ways I can do that. One of them is I can just press enter. I'm sorry. Yeah, I guess I can do that. Press enter right now in order to finish drawing that line and then start drawing a new line, right? Now, if you uh, if you do it that way, and I'll press enter again. So now I have kind of two line segments here. Again, I can adjust the anchors if needed. Okay, and so I could apply like a different uh, graphic to this one. For instance, I could make it um, more transparent, and I could even, or I could, or I could apply a dashed line. Uh, do like a bigger outline there, right? So I could show like what I'm when I'm looking through the basket at a stitch that would be underneath. I could show that as a dashed line or as a, a semi-transparent line. Now, you don't have to draw like a bunch of individual segments like this. It's probably a little bit more labor intensive than doing it where I just draw, I'm just gonna like draw, you know, a longer kind of stitch, continuous stitch, that makes sense. So as I'm weaving my basket, I'm going over, under, over, under, right? Now, this is actually pretty, this might be a little bit tricky to see what I'm doing here. So first thing, I'm gonna actually turn down my stroke weight so I can see a little more clearly, there we go. And I'm also gonna turn off the dash line so I can see what I'm doing. Okay, now what I have is one line segment. If I wanted to separate that into separate segments so I can apply a different graphic styles to those se segments, uh, I can use a tool called the cut tool. Over there on the left, it's my scissors. You can also get to it by pressing C on the keyboard. Now, I don't, I don't think you have to cut it at an anchor point, but you can also snap to the anchor points there. So I could like do this like somewhere else. Oh, okay, I'm wrong. You do have to do anchor points, so, all right. 
So yeah, so we could just then go through and kind of snap to all our anchor points. And the beautiful thing about that is our, our line is quite clearly, you know, continuous. Like it's clear that this is all one big line, right? But then if I select all the stitches and I'm going to hold shift on the keyboard and select them all at once and I can then adjust them, adjust their visuals all at once. Uh, then I can create uh, a different graphic style, and and it's I think it's probably a little more clear that the uh, um, that it's one continuous line in a way. Okay, uh, and then you know the other thing, the way that these particular baskets are constructed is there's like a big bundle of fiber kind of going that way. Um, so I could also draw that. Uh, and I'll show you a couple tricks for that. So I'll draw a line, click and drag. Now, you do have to be careful that you don't snap to any existing anchor points because I think that can join your lines. Okay, so there's a line. Now, like I said, it's actually a bundle of fibers. So I drew a, a starting line on one side. Now I can, I'm gonna uncheck dash. I'm gonna, I can, um, what I can do is I can like offset that line a couple times to to show that it's like several fibers that are weaving through in that direction. So up in the, um, at the very top, I'll go to object. I think it's under path and then I'll go to yeah offset path. And let's see, we got a couple settings here so I can change how much it's offset. I'm gonna go to like 0.1 for now. Uh, round bevel join, interesting. Oh, you know what actually? Might or limit. I don't actually know what that means. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make one offset line. I wonder if you can do it without joining it. <laughs> Maybe not. So what I should have done is actually um, draw the line in the center. Uh, which I wonder if I can move it. No. I'll hit cancel real quick. So for now, I'm just going to quickly kind of move that. So it's centered, object, path, offset. And then we can like adjust 0.125, let's do 0.15. I don't know what minor limit means, 0.18 maybe. Just to kind of go to the extents of that part of the basket. Okay, great. So let's do that first. Click OK. Again, you can just draw these manually if you wanted to. So I'm going to cut this. I'm going to get rid of the end segments. So I have two separate lines again. And I'll delete those segments there. Yeah, this is kind of tricky. So now if I select both of these lines, which I could just draw two lines to pen with the pen tool also. But if I select both of these lines and go to object, I can go to blend down here, make. What happened? Interesting. Not sure what why. I'm gonna undo that. Maybe I need to click on the other option. So I'll again hold shift, select both, object, blend, blend options. Okay. I see. Okay. So under the drop down, I'm gonna click specified steps. And I'm gonna choose like five. And I think we wanna keep it, yeah, oriented to path. Click OK. Now if I go to Object Blend, click Make, there we go. I should get a bunch of individual segments. OK, great. I don't know if those are, yeah, so that remains one object, which is cool. It makes it easier to edit. I'm going to change the color of that so that it's distinct. I'm going to get rid of that middle line as well, because that's the base that I started from. And then what I actually want to do here is, is, is change the uh, there we go. Let's actually make this a little more opaque too, real quick. Actually, we could make everything more opaque. So one thing to do, you probably might have already run into this. It's annoying, like trying to select things sometimes when you have multiple, uh, you know, kind of things layered up. What I can do is just like in Photoshop, I can use the layers panel. So I'll go to my layers panel there. Again, if you don't have that, go to Window Layers. I'll make a new layer. So if I grab, if I select my photo of my basket, uh, you can see over in the layers panel, when I select it, it shows a little square there on the right-hand side. That means it's on layer one. 
And what I actually want for it to be on a separate layer so I can lock it and keep, uh, keep it out of the way as I'm working on my pen lines there. So I'll click and drag that to layer two. And then that I can also click the little space next to the visibility. Also, I can toggle the visibility to lock it. Now, because the layer two is above layer one in the layers panel, it's actually hiding the um, lines that I've drawn. So all I need to do is drag it below. There we go. And now I shouldn't, because that layer is locked, I can't like accidentally grab my image and mess it up somehow. All right. So if I were to select all my images, I'm sorry, all my lines that I've drawn there so far, I can make them semi-opaque. Semi-transparent, semi-opaque. OK. And then the last thing I want to do is bring some of these lines up above so that I can see that they're going over the coil in places. And then where it's dashed, it's going under the coil. So if I click on those lines that should be above, right click anywhere, go to arrange, bring to front. Here we go. Um, last thing I might want to do is add some arrows so I can indicate like the direction that I'm going with the stitch. If I go to the stroke panel again, down here it says arrow heads and I have a couple options like arrow nine. You don't have to choose arrow nine. Now that is interesting. One of them is backwards. Well, how do I fix that? So I think because they're kind of grouped right now, I would have to ungroup them. Oh, also I can adjust the scale there. So they're not all overlapping each other. I could also draw manually, like I could draw one big arrow ahead with just like the line tool, the pen tool. You know, and then I could create a fill to show it's like one big thing. Uh, in any case, I'm gonna. So what I want to do is like ungroup these. How do I do that? If I select them, uh, simplify. Well, that doesn't work. Uh, I don't know. Maybe isolate. And then I can click that line on the left. And over here in my stroke panel, there's a little swap arrow start and end button. <laughs> what happens if I now exit my isolate? That is crazy. It's making different size lines from the big first one to the last one. <laughs> um, hmm. So I don't know if I would have to actually redo it with the arrows going the same way in order to make them all at one end. And I also don't know if I can sort of like ungroup this somehow. Maybe if I just edit. Yeah, I can't ungroup it. I'm not sure what kind of an object it is. Yeah, so I think I would have to kind of uh, redo it with the arrowheads at the same end. There must be a way to separate them, but I'm, I'm not sure what it is. Anyway, um, OK. So I would have to go back and kind of redo that, basically. If I make a pen. I wonder if that would work. Let's see, two lines. So I drew them kind of starting and ending at the same, like starting down below, ending up above. If I add arrowheads there, so that's the opposite, but so okay, we added arrowheads and I can change the scale and make that like 75. And then now if I blend them, let's just see. Options are the same, yes, and so it puts all the airheads at the same end. That's what I wanted. Okay. And then I would have to bring these lines back up above. Illustrator just draws whatever, you know, anything new you add is automatically on top, so you have to sometimes rearrange stuff. Okay, and the same could be done for this, right? So I could add airheads to this. Arrow nine. Change the size, that's huge. 
50% maybe. And actually, I think I do want that on the other end. Yeah, we could try different ones. That one's kind of hard to see. Anyway, so um, yeah, that's just a preview of some of the tools that you might find helpful to, to create a diagram of the stitching pattern of uh, this basket. Now, just like with Photoshop, when you save this file, you want to save an Adobe Illustrator file. Uh, where am I here? Let's see. Don't have a folder for this. All right. Okay. Now that's an Illustrator file. So just like with Photoshop, it'll retain all the objects and editability that we had um, when we made it. And then if I wanted to export that, as a PDF, for instance, I can go to File, Export, uh, Export As. Uh, maybe, OK, yeah, I'm sorry. Not Export, not Export. File, Save As. I had Save As Copy. You don't need to do that. Save As. PDF. I actually think in PDF form, you'll get a, uh, it'll be editable as well. I'm not sure what this is. I'm just going to click. OK, great. Save PDF. Leave everything default. Oops. And if I go to that folder, here we go. We've got a PDF that we could use in our, um, in our presentation. And I think that will end this video.